Hi, my name is Zenka Caro. I make the impossible possible. And today we're gonna to be talking about a new economic model called the passion-based economy or lovingly called the dream machine. Uh, you might wonder, I have a bunch of scabs on my nose and mouth because I crashed on a bike um, course, obstacle course thing. Uh, so anyway, <laughs> so we're gonna talk today about leverage. So leverage is where you have a small amount of effort and a huge effect. And this is where consciousness and, cr and creating in the world, so it's not just about what we think and dream about, it's about creating that in the world so that others can, can have it, touch it, see it, taste it, and have it be real. So the economic model uh, that we're proposing has a bunch of different trickle, uh, it's not trickle down, it's trickle away theory. So the amount of capital that you need to build the prototype trickles away to almost nothing by the time you go through our filter system. So this process was is been in effect. We've been using it over the years and we wanna roll it out. Um, we are going to be rolling it out uh, in Sedona. Uh, more broadly and uh again this is the idea that everything sort of we've got new technology we've got a new consciousness we've got a new understanding but our systems the things that hold us together as a community whether it's our rec centers our study spaces our healthcare, is is kind of behind and so what can we build that would serve the everyday user the the people here in sedona so we'd love to look at this just in sedona in a small town um what would be needed to make the world awesome for for people and then then you can take those ideas that have been prototyped out to the rest of the world so uh, let's get started. So the idea again is that we're going to be funding innovation in the chap the cheapest way possible. That in the funnest uh, as well, the most leveraged way. How do we fund innovation at a leveraged way? Here we go. So the first thing we want to start with is the project, the prototype. Um, obviously, um, whenever you're doing a business or a prototype or, or a community template, you want to see is anybody else doing it out there that I can learn from? How are they doing it? What are they charging? How does it work? So the first thing is to look at that prototype and see if it already exists. If it doesn't already exist, then we want to prototype it because innovation involves things that are new, right? So that goes into here and we list the five things that we'll need. Uh, now, uh, this can be like, for example, um, <sighs> let me think of an example. I should have figured that out before I started. Uh, so the makerspace, let's take the makerspace. Uh, so we wanted to make a makerspace that was actually pretty modern, um, that had other things that modern makerspaces don't have. We're used to this idea of rec centers but those are mostly for swimming and working out, um, maybe a yoga class, a Zumba, uh, but it doesn't include uh, you know, laser cutters or um, t-shirt printers or sewing machines or 3D printers. So let's say that's our idea. So what we need would be um, a space, right? So we're gonna have that needed. We need a person to run it um we might need a website um we might need some equipment which is let's say a laser cutter and so sewing machines but for now we're just going to go with these five right so the first thing we do is we set the intention uh now this is somewhat new to the way that we're doing things. So this is the power of eight to 12. This is the dream machine. We have different projects. This is BioCybernaut. This is uh, the Love Ray. So we have different ways of bringing people together um, that they go into a circle, kind of like Lynn McTaggart's circle, um, where she proved that you could get eight people together and really concentrate and imagine someone well, and that actually uh, can have these profound, weird healing effects. And we're not, this is like the mystery zone. We don't know why this works, but it works. 
Uh, and we'll talk about more of some of the successes that we've had, but right now I want to go over the architecture of, of all of how this trickle away theory works. So the intention is very important. And in fact, it might even be the most important thing that we're not doing it now that we're not doing currently. Now, Lynn McTaggart has a project called, um, uh, Revolution 8, and it's the idea of taking communities, um, to build prototypes, to build, uh, to, to build things their community needs. And so this is all the same idea here. This is very powerful. Um, once you get that, you look for win-win situations. So where does someone else exactly want to do that same thing? There might be a person in Sedona that really wants to do a maker space. In fact, there is already a space in a high school here, but it's not well utilized and it doesn't have some of these other things. So we might say that we get the space for free. The person might be there. We still need a website. Um, we still need a laser cutter and a sewing machine. When we break these down into five things, we realize that they come in people, places, and things, right? You need tools, you need people, you need spaces. So, so here we go. Um, once we get to the win-win, um, then we go to the volunteer. So you might get people that um, don't want to do it for free. They're, it's not exactly what they wanted to do, but they're willing to help Sedona. They're willing to help the kids. They're willing to help the Dream Machine. So we might find additional people to support with that. Um, so we might need a lot of volunteers and maybe one paid person, but, but in this scenario, um, let's say we still need a person half part-time. Okay. So, so once we do the volunteer match, um, then we're looking for barter and trade. So barter and trade is really cool because we've been doing it a lot in Sedona where you say, okay, I'm going to give you this thousand dollar class and you're going to give me thousand dollars off of the rental of your space. And that's what we did with the fashion lab. All of a sudden we traded away a thousand dollars that we didn't have to come up with to get the project tested and going. So that's good. Um, then you might have, and there's all sorts of trade systems out there. There's time banks, there's different things, um, that, um, that can come into, into play here. Um, then there's also crypto and other non, you know, alternative economy things. So maybe, um, there's some other crypto thing that could happen. Maybe someone all of a sudden we got, you know, there's a, there's a list that the library publishes of things that nonprofits need. So let's say we get the laser cutter donated. Um, now all we need is a sewing machine. We, we could get a sewing machine donated for sure. All we need now is a website and some, a person to run it half time. Um, so, so maybe the, the, uh, trade is the website. So let's say we trade a website. I know how to make websites, so I'll do the website. Um, and we'll trade that for, um, something that I want a massage or something like that. Right. Um, and then after crypto, you have fiat. So you do have money at the end, but all of a sudden, all we need to do is pay a person half time, uh, for a certain number of months. Now, um, let's say that's, let's say that's $3,000 a month for, um, six months or let's say 12 months again. So you do the math on that. Um, so 36,000, that's still a lot. Um, but, but it's a lot less than you would need to do the whole thing. Now that person that creates this prototype of a new kind of makerspace, um, would then publish the results of what they're doing uh, for other cities to use. They also might decide to create an impact business or a business or a franchise, but the idea is really to test out how this new makerspace would work when we're adding things that are more feminine um, or things that are more um, useful in this day and age. 
So that's how the, the dream machine works. Now, this can also work as a uh, website, right? So as a simple text website, where we talk about the different ways to do the intention with BioCybernaut, who's doing biofeedback intention to people, you know, of, of all cut types, the love ray, which is holding your hands in a certain way, a Lynn McTaggart. So this can all be resources on how to do this very critical part. Um, then, then this part is where are there systems where people are looking for win-win situations. There's even things like um, Free Cycle and other programs where someone wants to give something away that someone needs. Okay, so this is where you need a network effect um, of a lot of people looking on it to close this gap as best as you can. Um, volunteer, you know, what are systems for volunteers? How do, how do you get volunteers? All of the websites and things that would help us do this better would go here. Um, and then all the ideas for trading, et cetera, would go there. So it's an idea um, to, to apply this method to, to building and innovation prototypes for a lot less money. Uh, because what we've realized is, is money and time is usually the excuse that we all give ourselves for not following our dreams when it's not really always needed. In fact, you know, computer programming is one thing that you think, well, you definitely need money for that because these pro computer programmers are so in high demand. And then all of a sudden I was like, yeah, but maybe you actually don't even need money to build software. And my friend who built an app called Voyage, which helps people give free or paid experiences, kind of like Google, uh, kind of like Airbnb experiences, programmed and published her entire app for free with 10 people that helped her do it. All the graphics, all the programming, all the, the wireframes. So it's interesting. Um, money can never be excused. If passion is in your heart and you want to test something that would be useful to other communities and towns, then here you go.